Hey everybody, it's Ron and Ellie, back with this week's edition of Ask Ron. First up is two questions from Alexander McGee in South Carolina. Alexander McGee. says. First question is, when filling out the lead sheet, you mm -hmm. have the instructions, if the asking price and loan balance are within 35000 mm -hmm. ask them will you suffer what you owe. Yeah. Could I use a percentage instead of that flat number, or does that apply to all price ranges? No, it doesn't apply to all price ranges because if I've got a hundred thousand dollar house, I'm gonna have a different dollar spread than, than if I got a five hundred thousand dollar house. So just use your best judgment. If the asking price is even close to the um, loan amount, just go ahead and ask, go ahead and ask the question. I created the thirty-five thousand dollar number to just give people a, a guide to go by, it, but doesn't mean you can't exceed that guide. Okay, the second question is also about the lead sheet. He says, why doesn't the lead sheet have subject to as an option for the sellers? It does. It's called, will you sell for what you owe? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when you get a yes to that answer, it is either you're going to buy it with subject to or you're going to uh, buy it with owner financing for the loan amount. And the, the difference between those two will hinge on whether the seller is willing to just deed it to you and walk away or not, like in subject to. Sometimes they want you to do a wraparound device like a land contract or a wraparound mortgage so that they can see they have a piece of paper showing that you're making them a payment so that they might get credit from the lender and not have a debt ratio issue. And of course the third option is a lease purchase. Either way, if you get a yes to will I sell for what I owe, at least you know you're going to buy it for that price. You're just not sure on uh, which document you're going to use until you do a little bit of more questioning from the seller. Okay. Next up is Judy Roundsville from Wisconsin. Judy? She says, I'm confused as to when to use a wraparound mortgage and land contracts. Can mm -hmm. you explain when to use them? Well, they accomplish the same thing, Judy. They're not the same thing, but they're all a wraparound device like I just described. If you live in a state with a land contract and it's very common, that's probably what you're going to wind up using because it's common. Uh, in Florida, I use a wraparound mortgage because we have agreements for deeds here, but they are of no value because it takes just as much time to get it back if, uh, if I have to foreclose on a wraparound as it does an agreement for deed. That's not the case with most states, in fact, and I think include, and Wisconsin is one of them. I think you'll find it's much quicker to get it back on a contract for deed than a wraparound mortgage. Therefore, if you're selling it, you'll be selling it on the, with the fastest way to get it back, and that would be a land contract. This is a discussion that you should have with your attorney when you get to the point to where you actually have a property to discuss on the proper uh, document to use. Remember, your attorney draws it up. You don't ever draw up either one of those documents. All you do is draw up a purchase and sale agreement and your attorney takes it from there. Okay, next up is Patricia McLean from Georgia. Patricia. She's closing on a deal where she bought subject to and is selling with a lease option. Mm -hmm. Her question is, do I set up an escrow account for the tenant to deposit monthly rents? Mm -hmm. And what sort of statement would the tenant get that shows what they paid and how it's deducted from the loan? Well, you can uh, handle it yourself. You do not need an escrow account, although it doesn't hurt for you to have one of your own internal accounts where you put the money in and then make the payment out. And if I were you, I'd leave the difference in the account for when things go wrong. Um, that's always good money management. Don't spend every dollar you get. Um, there's a company that'll do all that for you called escrowserve.com. That's escrow, E-S-C-R-O-S-E-R-V, no E on the end, dot com. They'll set it up, collect, make the payment underneath, drop the difference in uh, the account, whoever's account it goes in, and send each a 1099 at the end of the year and do all that for you for $15 a month, which I pass on to the buyer and it's a $50 setup fee, I think, and they do it all over the country. They do it on a lease purchase or on a, a, a wraparound uh, mortgage, incoming mortgage payment device. Uh, so um, that's the easiest thing. If you don't want to do that, then you'll have to do it yourself, but you don't need a separate escrow account unless you just want to have one for, for your own business purposes. Okay, next up is Peter from Florida. He says, Ron, on, these, on deals where the property will be lease optioned or an axe deal, can mm -hmm. the seller qualify for a new mortgage if they have an underlying mortgage and a lease option income? Yes and no, Peter. That's up to the lender that they go to because some of them will give them credit for the incoming payment. Some of them won't. And, of course, I don't know anything else about their debt ratio, so that's totally a case-by-case. Case. So the best thing you can do is don't make any statements concerning that. Uh, you're always, always, you should check with your lender on that and not make any promises you can't keep because you have no idea what their lender's going to do. Uh, and even if you knew what they were going to do today, that doesn't mean that's what they're going to do a year or two from now. So just stay out of that 
conversation as much as you can and refer to uh, them referring to a lender. Okay, next up are two questions from David Shipp in Alabama. David. He says, first question is, what is the exit strategy for a situation where you're unable to find a tenant buyer in a lease purchase agreement within three months? Well, your exit strategy is you either renew it because you want to keep trying, or you tell the seller, I've done everything I know how to do, and I can't find anybody interested in this house, therefore um, we can avoid this agreement right now. It's going to be actually up to the seller, not you. If you've got a 90-day agreement, whether they want to extend it or not, of course, yes, it's still up to you. You may not want to extend it. Uh, however, if you haven't found a tenant buyer in a normal, nice house in a nice neighborhood in 90 days, you probably got a problem with your marketing plan attracting buyers, and I take a real hard look at that because there's most certainly something broke there. Um, I've had trouble finding buyers in 90 days, but these are on multi-million dollar properties for the norm. I don't generally have those issues on the lower end properties. Well, his follow-up question is kind of about marketing. He says, do you know of any websites where we can advertise for tenant buyers interested in a lease option? Yeah, Craigslist <laughs> and a whole host of others. Um, go to Google and type in, I want to sell a home in your city, and here come a whole bunch of websites. You should be advertising on all of those sites. They're all free anyway. And of course, get Craigslist in there, and that's all you can do. But I'll tell you, you're gonna get more bang for your buck by putting out the pointer signs, pointing to the house with an arrow and the phone number uh, for them to call than you are anything you place online. You'll get many, many times more calls from signs than you will any online advertising. Okay, last of this week is Ted Peterson from Connecticut. Ted? He's got a wholesale deal he wants to run by you. Okay. The R is 75000 Yep. He needs 15000 in repairs. Yep. Asking is 43000 Yep. Comps around 40000 And he says, here's my problem. Comps around 40000 You yes. just said the R was 79000 Which is it? That's the information he gave me. R of 75, comps around forty. Okay. All right. And it says, here's my problem. The house is probably worth around 75000 if it was completely rehabbed, but right. the most recent sales in the area are closer to 40000 That's because they're not rehabbed. They're, you can't use those for comps. Those are bank-owned sales. You need to totally ignore them and go find a couple of comps that are in good condition and sold to an owner-occupant with an arm's-length transaction. Those are the only two you can use for comps. The 40000 is irrelevant. Okay, I think that's kind of his first question. Uh, his second question was, since this is a listed property, what kind of earnest money do you think would be fair on this kind of deal, and when do I pay it? Well, uh, that you didn't tell me if it was a bank property or not. If it is, they're going to want a $1,000 deposit, and I always write, have them write my contract that they get it within three days after acceptance, so I don't pay it until my offer is accepted, and I know that I uh, want the deal after uh, visiting it. I visit the property after the offer is accepted. I give them a the deposit after the visit. Okay, Ron, that's all the questions we have this week. All right. See you guys next week. We'll get some deals done.